Charlie Power Vision, Lesson 2. What is EFI? EFI is electronic fuel injection. Electronic fuel injection system is a very precise way to meter fuel into an internal combustion engine. It does this by having a pressurized fuel system with an injector on one end that is either opened or closed. When it is open, it flows fuel at a very specific rate. Um, this rate is measured by Harley in grams per second. And it is how they rate their injectors, by how many grams of fuel by weight per second they will flow for every second they are open. The Harley ECM electronic control module calculates how long to open the injector to get the right amount of fuel for the current riding condition. The ECM also controls ignition timing, and on most new motorcycles, it controls the throttle as well. Advantages of EFI. Does EFI improve fuel economy? Yes, through better atomization and the fact that it squirts the fuel directly into the port right on top of the intake valve, the hottest part of the intake track, using the engine's heat to help atomize the fuel, um, it will vaporize more fuel and improve fuel economy. Does it improve emissions? Well, of course it improves emissions. That's kind of why most everything today is electronic fuel injected is because meet ever-increasing EPA standards. Um, and it does it the same way it improves fuel economy. Better atomization means better vaporization, which means burning more fuel and wasting less raw fuel off the exhaust pipe. Does it increase peak power? Well, a lot of people seem to think it does, uh, but electronic fuel injection does not. A stock a vehicle with a carburetor flowing the exact same amount of air that a throttle body would flow on a vehicle with fuel injection, delivering the proper fuel to make peak horsepower under the current air conditions will make the exact same power. Atomizing fuel is great for a lot of things. Um, digital fuel injection is great for a lot of things. Um, peak horsepower is not really one of them. Um, does it correct for altitude? Absolutely. This is one of the biggest advantages to running electronic fuel injection on any vehicle is the amount of oxygen in the air varies, requires varying fuel mixtures. What affects the amount of oxygen in the air will be engine temp or air temperature, air pressure, and humidity. Of course, if you go up and down in altitude, your air pressure changes, but you don't have to go anywhere for the air temperature to change. So proper fuel injection setup, properly calibrated, which is what our goal is, will properly correct for the ever-changing air conditions. As stated, by producing a very fine spray under high pressure and squirting it into the port right next to the intake valve um, creates very good atomization and vaporization of the fuel. Um, the volume of fuel is controlled exactly by how long the injector is open. As we said, it flows a certain amount of fuel when it is open. So to make the vehicle richer or leaner, all we got to do is control how long the fuel, the injector is open. Um, the amount of time the injector is open is measured in milliseconds. That is one thousandth of a second. And it's called pulse width. The ECM controls the acceleration fuel. The ECM controls warm-up fuel, so you don't have to worry about a choke or any of that anymore. It measures that the engine temperature is cold, and it will enrich in the mixture accordingly. Very accurate targeting in every throttle position and every engine load. Um, it is a very precise uh, way to meter fuel. If you look at a carburetor, a typical carburetor may be having three jets. A uh, typical fuel injection system could be the equivalent of 3,000 or more. It has the ability to, to set up power and fuel economy at the same time, um, which is a little bit of a misnomer. Even a carburetor can be set up to have best power and best fuel economy. So this whole you need a power map and you need a fuel uh, an economy map is crazy. Um, 
When you roll your throttle open and you're under a heavy load on a carburetor, you're running the main jet. On a fuel-injected bike, you're running the high load areas. You set those for best power. When you're cruising at steady speed and you want good economy on a carburetor, that's ran by the intermediate circuit, a needle or an intermediate jet. And on fuel injection, it's just ran in a lower KPA on the air fuel table, and you just have it set for good economy. The biggest advantage to fuel injection, as we've already stated, is that it will correct the mixture for the ever-changing fuel conditions. At the heart of our electronic fuel injection system is the ECM. The ECM is basically just a computer. It monitors several inputs. It does math based on some tables we will call lookup tables that are programmed inside it. And then it produces the outputs we want. So it's like any computer, the inputs and outputs and some code in the middle. So some of the inputs that it monitors that help us a lot are the throttle position, the RPM, manifold absolute pressure, intake air temperature, the borrow, barometer as we would call a borrow, and the crank position sensor. Um, by monitoring these input sensors um, and looking at the air fuel ratio table, the volumetric efficiency table, um, the cubic inch displacement table, um, the injector size and spark tables, um, it allows the ECM to calculate the injector pulse width for how much fuel we need to deliver at any given moment and spark advance for the amount of advance we need, timing we need to run the engine. Um, this is considered a speed density fuel injection system. By measuring the air temperature and the barometer, the outside air pressure, it can determine how much oxygen is in any given volume of fuel. Then by looking at the air fuel table, it can determine exactly at any given point on that air fuel table how much fuel we need to deliver to that particular volume of oxygen to achieve our target air fuel ratio. And it calculates this mathematically, of course. Um, it looks at the VE tables versus the cubic inch tables to determine what the total volume of air flowing in. So at this point, it's done math and it's figured out how much air is flowing through the motorcycle at any given throttle position versus RPM, how much oxygen is that air based on the outside air condition, and then it can calculate how long it takes to open an injector. It's 4.35 grams for every second is open to get the proper pulse width to adjust to fire the spark to hit our desired or to fire the fuel to hit our desired air fuel ratio. Um, it does this every time it fires the injector. Every time it is calculating it how to fire it. So as the air temperature goes up and down throughout the day when you ride your bike, you go up and down at elevation in the mountains, it is continually correcting the injector pulse width to match for the outside changing air conditions. The one thing it can't change for though automatically is if you start changing hard parts on the motorcycle, cams, heads, pipes, this will change the way the air flows at any given RPM and throttle position in a different manner. Um, the ECM has no way to measure airflow. It is counting on us to calibrate the airflow on the VE tables and cubic inch displacement tables to represent the new airflow so that it knows the volume and then it just calculates what the oxygen content of that volume would be and then it calculates a proper injector pulse width choosing to view this online Harley Power Vision Theory course. These videos are designed to be used in conjunction with the downloadable PDF ebook. The chapters in the book coincide with these video chapters. Each video was kept as short as possible to make it easier for you to review areas you may have questions about. Please watch all the videos at least once to prepare yourself for your upcoming training. If you have a question, we urge you to rewatch the video covering that topic. If you still have a question, or you have a question about something not covered in the video, please fill out the tech question form on the website. We're always adding and updating the